All right, Kevin, Property Soldier here. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about something that almost cost me a lot of money. So hopefully you can learn from my experience on that. And so recently I did a video talking about selling a property that I used to use as serviced accommodation. Now, often when I get a property back from a tenant, uh, so a single let property, I get it back from a tenant, I will either sell it immediately if I decide that it's not going to work that well as service accommodation or I will try it as serviced accommodation. So sometimes I, I'm really confident it's going to work and sometimes I'm just going to test. And this particular one, it was OK. It worked pretty well, but not brilliantly. So I decided to sell that one and reinvest the money into property that works better as serviced accommodation. Now then. I'm always banging on about claiming your capital allowances on properties that you use as serviced accommodation. So rule of thumb is you get about 35% of the property's value as a capital allowance, which means that you can earn that amount of money tax free. So, you know, you can roughly do the maths yourself and how much of a tax saving could that be? It all depends on the uh, tax rate that you are on. Right. If you do your capital allowance on a property and sell it or stop doing service combination with that property, you can take the capital allowances with you. But you need to make sure that the buyer of the property signs what's called a 198 election, effectively gifting you the capital allowance. So the um, the buyer, unless the buyer intends to use the property as service combination themselves, and obviously the vast majority of people aren't, then they can't claim the capital allowances anyway. So it's absolutely no issue for them to sign the 198 election because effectively you claimed it. You're just they're just allowing you to take the claim with you. And so it's all the plant and machinery in the property that you were using as service combination. You, if you don't use it all up immediately, those capital allowances in, in, in a tax year, they roll over into subsequent tax years. But effectively, if you sell the property, you can still take the capital allowances with you and then offset those capital allowances against your other serviced accommodation income or furnished holiday let income. All right. So really important that you get the buyer to sign a 198 election. Now, OK, I was busy. <laughs> and so running a service combination business, actually selling a couple of other properties that don't work uh, as service combination, selling those and life and et cetera, et cetera. So I forgot to um, flag up in advance that the buyer must sign this 198 election and get it explained properly to the buyer so that they weren't spooked. So you... You have to do this well in advance because it takes a while to educate the letting agent and it definitely takes a while to educate the conveyancing solicitors about this. They always think you're talking about capital gains. And so you need to make sure that you, you get this uh, cleared up. So last minute, I'm I'm haven't completed yet. And all of a sudden I actually spoke to my accountant and the accountant said, oh, by the way, that one you're selling, have you got the 198 election? Um, signed and I uh, said uh, no and this was in the the final few days before completion so all of a sudden I've got to hustle and again the the agent um, didn't want to get involved because they didn't understand I was trying to explain but they didn't understand so they didn't want to try and explain it to the buyer um, I tried my own uh, solicitors they didn't want to get involved in trying to explain it to the buyer's solicitors because again it gets lost in translation it kept coming back to me uh, with why on earth did the buyer got to give you your uh, capital gains um, and so ultimately this is the best way to deal with it this is this is what I um, ended up doing so my accountant understands capital allowances so what my accountant did is explain to the estate agent's accountant about capital allowances and 198 election and taking and the seller taking the capital allowances with them and the fact that it has no impact on the buyer whatsoever. And so then the estate agent's accountant, who had just become educated on capital allowances, was happy to explain to the 
buyer of the property and reassure the buyer of the property that there was no issues with them signing the 198 election. Now, because I'd left it till the last minute, I agreed to pay the estate agent's accountant a fee to do that for me, to explain to the buyer on my behalf that there was nothing to fear with signing the 198 election. And that was a couple of hundred pounds that I agreed to pay. Now then, they, the buyer then signed the 198 election and I was able to take thousands and thousands of pounds worth of capital allowances with me. So it was definitely worth my while paying that 200 pounds. So I am still selling other properties that don't work brilliantly well as service combination, so X buy to let properties. But well in advance, I'm making sure that the agent is explaining to the buyer that I'm going to require, otherwise I won't sell it to them, a 198 election to be signed. And if they have their own accountant, then by all means speak to their own accountant. If their own accountant doesn't understand it, their own accountant can speak to my accountant and then their, their accountant will understand it. If they don't have their own accountant, then they are more than welcome to speak to the agent's accountant and pay the agent accountant a fee for that advice if the agent's accountant if it's a different agent do not understand it then by all means that agent's accountant can speak to my accountant but the, the the buyer is going to have to pay that fee moving forward so this is as long as all this gets flagged up well enough in advance it is cool so I just wanted to share with you what happened under that circumstance so a couple of key learnings a, make sure you claim your capital allowances. So get a capital allowance surveyor that understands capital allowances on furnished holiday let property. And get that capital allowance surveyor to do a capital allowance claim. And the capital allowance surveyor gives the claim to your accountant. Your accountant logs it against your tax um, ID. So that is the process. Don't get your accountant to do a capital allowance claim for furnished holiday let because your accountant will not get anything like as big a claim for you as a specialist capital allowance surveyor. So it's definitely worth um, employing a specialist in that area. So that's you claiming your capital allowances and it creates an awful lot of tax free money. And in certain circumstances, you get sideways relief on those capital allowances, etc. But do get your capital allowances claimed on furnished holiday let property. And if you are selling that property, make sure you get a 198 election signed so that you can take the capital allowances with you and offset the capital allowance against your other furnished holiday let income. So hopefully that was useful, everybody. Here's to your service accommodation success. And remember, your future needs you. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you are watching this on YouTube. If you've got any comments, then type those in the comment section and I will answer those when I look back in on this thread. And if you find all this type of information useful, give me a like and click the notify to be uh, made aware of when I am doing other videos so that you don't miss out on any top tips in property and service accommodation. So take care, everybody. See you soon.